Much love for my brothers in the darkness. What's up, beautiful spirits? <laughs> East Bay gangsters in the house. What's up, baby? My man Spice One's in the cut. Javante Davis. Hugo Ruiz. One and done. One and done. When we going to see Tank go 12 rounds? It's only been once, and it seems like that's been a quite a long, quite a long, quite a long time. You feel me? Um, Hugo. Didn't do much but land a straight right. And then Tank commenced to pound, bust his nose. Wonderful right hook that fit through a nice tight area. Between the gap and his gloves, landed straight on the button. Hugo looked like he was coming forward. Staggered to the left. Fight over. That's all we got. <sighs> Not very much to say. Um. They say Tank gonna have two more fights this year. And hopefully I believe he said that next week he would like to have one in June. Yes. One thing I need to say about all of this. It seems like this is a Tank reboot. Doesn't it? The press run. Mayweather addressing the press, walking beside Tank after the fight was over, answering questions, going down a row of press row. And it sounded like, it looked like a repeat or deja vu of what they had to do. Last fight, fight before that. I guess um, working through issues. One thing, they're walking tanks slow. You know, because when you get... It, we don't want tanked. We don't want Tank Davis to be put in a situation like Tyson was. Tyson hit it more on a more grander scale. But Tank has become very, very, very popular amongst the boxing world. He's not a household name amongst everyone. But diehard fans, even casual fans, know who Tank Davis is. And I'm talking about not the casual casual, but the casual, the next step, you know what I mean, above a regular casual. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't believe. I believe they don't don't want they don't want Tank to move too fast. And here's how I think it's going to play out. Speculation, of course. Tank. Lomo, Tank, Farmer, Tank, Ryan Garcia. Golden Boy has Ryan Garcia. Mayweather has Tank Davis. I think that's the end game for them. Not the end end, but that's what they're building up to. Since Ryan Davis is four years younger than Tank, only 14, 15 fights in so far. And he can be the next golden boy. The next golden boy. The next American Mexican. Or y'all may say Mexican American.
since De La Hoya to be a mega star in boxing, a Mexican American to be a mega star in boxing, pretty boy face, he's not gonna have the Olympic gold or Olympic pedigree, but he's young. Today and age, the Olympics, or should I say social media, following has kind of replaced the Olympic pedigree you must have had, you must have to become a mega star in boxing. You know what I mean? Before, you needed that launch pad from the Olympics to catapult your career to superstardom. in the professional boxing world. Now, if you can get that same popularity spring from your social media following, they're using that to replace the Olympics. My opinion. And Javante has a big social media following, and Ryan can see, I believe, what has a million plus on his Instagram too. So they both got those live. That is going to be the mega pay-per-view battle, fight. And that could be, of course, a potential two, three fights between those two. I think when they fight again, Tank going to be more closer to 26, 27, 27, 28, Ryan Garcia, 23, 24. The Lomachenko, which is will be the first of the three big fights tank in the, for Tank in the future. Unless they come back and get the Abner Morris. But I believe they're going to go Lomachenko, Farmer, Ryan Garcia. Or Farmer, Lomachenko, Ryan Garcia. Could be that. That's going to be the three pay-per-view joints they want for Tank Davis. I think they're waiting for although Farmers now, I believe he's with the match room, right? So is he fighting on Dazzin? They have to work that out some way, but they can make that work. But those are going to be the paydays. And all three of them are going to be interesting. The thing is, you got Tank and Ryan at 130 now. Ryan Garcia is 5'10 at 20 years old. He's when Tank and Ryan Farmer meet up, they will be at 135. They're going to be at 135 by then. Okay? Both of them. Because Tank's going to jump up first. Ryan Garcia will come behind him. Take the belt or whatever that Tank could probably release or going to come for later on. They might fight. So I'm not sure how they're going to do that. But I plan on them two probably going to fight at 135. They're not going to even meet each other at 130. Because it's going to be like three or four years past. Watch. Tank will go up to fight for the 135. That's going to be the Lomachenko belt. If he was to win that, he had have. And Ryan going to fight for the belt that Tank relinquished to go up to 135. And then they're eventually going to meet at 135. Tevin Farmer is going to fight. Tevin Farmer and Tank going to be at 130, I assume. I think. I think that's going to be at 130. Um, and the wonderful thing is, the crazy thing is about, different thing about Tevin Farmer and the Tank thing. And you're going to hear me use this example analogy first. You have a fighter. Now, Farmer is four years older than Tank. So that's how they're trying to squeeze this gap here. You know what I'm saying? It's funny. They gap, Tank is in a gap between fights. Two fighters that's a little well ahead of him a little bit. And he got the, the one with the big money coming up underneath him. So it's not nobody really there in the middle. Tank can really just bank on <laughs> You know what I'm saying? 
it, it's so it's like they're trying to strategize these two, that farmer and that little machinko, and then for Ryan Garcia, buy time for Ryan Garcia to pull up more momentum, more following, so that could be a, a, a mega, mega huge purse fight. So that's what they're doing. Mayweather and Golden Boy are working together. A lot of people think Mayweather and De La Hoya hate each other. I honestly believe they do not. They both came un out, of, they both were spinoffs of top rank, Bob Aaron. I think they both learned how they got to work and finesse the boxing world, the casuals, on how to build a fight and they working together as a relationship. They understand good guy, bad guy. You know what I'm saying? They understand the black fighter versus the Mexican fighter. And Mayweather, De La Hoya, Golden Boy, Mayweather Promotions, play back and forth off each other as that. I think that's exactly how they did. Because remember, De La Hoya left top rank first. He was with top rank, he left, started going to board. Mayweather leaves top rank, starts Mayweather promotions. I don't think that's by coincidence. You know what I mean? Aaron is the fighter that started them both. Or the promoter, I mean. So I think those guys play off of that and use the media for that. And are in the public eye to show demise, try to show animosity, try to sh sh show or convince everybody this is a really... Whenever these two camps are going against each other, Mayweather versus the De La Hoya or the Golden Boy, this is a really a beef fight. And that's how they plan on making their money in the future off that. You know what I'm saying? These, from the promotions, from the fighters above, to the, from the fighters, to the promotion companies, to the fighters, whoever they're representing, it's bad blood from the top bottom here. These guys really, really don't like each other. You know what I mean? That's going to make for a big fight that everybody wants to see. So I think Mayweather and De La Hoya understand that and they are brothers and partners and making sure they keep that contrast between them of that dislike or illusion of dislike, the appearance of dislike and hate and bad blood. I think they love each other. I think they just work in the game how they're supposed to work it for the money, personally. But Farmer, you have a fighter and you got Javante Tavis. This is, Farmer could be the glitch in all of this. <laughs> Farmer could be the glitch in all of this. Farmer doesn't have the natural power or the punching power at all close to Javante Davis. You know what I'm saying? But, Southpaw versus Southpaw. Slick versus another slick fighter. Both counter punchers. Both can initiate the attack as well. Do Javante Davis have the power to get Farmer out of there early on? People will wonder that. I think he does. But then again, I think Farmer has so much heart and won it so badly that he wouldn't go down like that. And I think he would continue to fight, fight, fight and pull the best out of Tank that we all are waiting to see. And then Tank is going to pull the best out of Farmer. Now this is really a, a, a beef match. They want that. This is going to be a war. I don't... Um, people want to say, well, Tank is hard. And, but I seen Farmer get hit hard and not go anywhere. If his condition is superb, 
This is going to be a ridiculous fight. Real talk. I want to see Tevin Farmer and Javante Davis more than I want to see Javante Davis and Lomachenko. Just real talk. It's going to be mega. But you have a guy with Javante Davis, and I'm in this here, that was born with all the natural abilities, it seems. And been given the key to it all early on. Has it gone to his head? Has he really worked on his craft? Has he, has he been given too much too soon? On the other hand, you have Farmer, who's had to scrap his way all the way up to becoming a champion. He was the last minute call in for Pedraza fight. When Pedraza's initial opponent fell out. This is somebody who may not have been blessed with all the natural ability, but he has that natural instinct. And as you see him fight, 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 it seems the work ethic, the work ethic, the push, has raised this ability where it looks so natural to him now. So you have a thing where you have the best, where you have somebody who was born with just all the natural abilities in Javante Davis, okay? That could perhaps be spoiling it because he's not getting the challenges early on that he needs to bring that level higher and higher. He was born with such a natural ability so early on that he was blowing everybody out of it. And it's a, if you let that natural ability, you would take it for granted, I should say, and not work on it as much as you should be able to work on it to maximize that natural ability to be just completely phenomenal off this charts. Because he's looking phenomenal too soon because he's not getting no real, real challenges. Kind of like Roy Jones went through early on in his career. But then you got this guy Farmer. who looked like he had four losses early on, three losses, four losses early on in his career that make, that make you underestimate his ability because those early losses was him scrapping up. He wasn't given the golden key to the city like Javante early on. He had to scrap, scrap, scrap. Work, work, work. And to where just the hard ethic work, he could perhaps, that hard eth ethic, workability, perhaps can supersede the natural ability that this fighter has in Javante Davis through his work ethic constant activity and sheer desire. His, the work ethic drive behind this one can raise him above the wonderful, wonderful natural pure ability of this one. If this thing keeps going the way we've seen it, if this keeps going the way we have seen it, where Javante's getting his first round knockouts, and this crap, and this guy is fighting and scrapping and just getting better and better and better. He wants it so bad. You're going to see work ethic supersedes natural ability. This happens often time in the world. Work ethic can supersede and rise this fighter above a fighter that was born with it all. If it's not cultivated and put to the maximum ability as it should. This happens often in the world. This was Bernard Hawkins and Roy Jones Jr. You feel me? Devontae Davis is like Roy Jones Jr. And Tevin Farmer reminds me of Bernard Hawkins. So it's going to be a wonderful thing to see how this thing plays out in the boxing world. This is Myron Magnus. You listen to a segment of Pure Pugilism, Boxing Logic, One Love.